So ladies and gentlemen, sun has entered Virgo in the sidereal zodiac and many of you have requested me from many many months that I should make the transit video of sun. So here it is. I forgot it's a bit late but and you have also requested me to continue with the ascendant series. Yes, I will do it. Just be patient. And yes, if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it below. And if you want a consultation from me regarding this transit or any other area of your life, you can go to my website down below in the description section. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. So what is Virgo and what is the sun? It's a very interesting uh, way to understand Virgo. What does Virgo represent? It's the original sign number six. Why six? Why not five? Why not four? <laughs> Why not seven? Actually, it can be more than six, but it cannot be less than six. I'll tell you why. Six represents the six anarthas which we have. Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha, Madha, Matsari. These are the anarthas. Lust, anger, greed, pride, envy, illusion. These are the six anarthas and that is why it is in the sixth house okay and um, that is why there uh, if you take com permutations and combinations of these there can be unlimited number of anarthas so that's why i said it has to be minimum six can be anything about <laughs> could be 600 could be six million six billion anarthas okay but these six are the roots okay and Therefore, uh, it's the sixth house of, uh, it's very interesting, you know, uh, they say that, um, which is the house of celibacy, Brahmacharya, they say it's the sixth house and Virgo is also the virgin. Okay? So, uh, if you go back to Bhagavad Gita and you see, uh, Arjuna asks this question to Krishna that, oh Krishna, what is that which pulls a good person towards doing wrong activities. What does Krishna answer? Krishna answers, Kama esha krodha esha rajo gunasa mudbhavaha mahashano maha papan vidhye namiha vairinam It's a very beautiful answer Krishna gives. Krishna says, O oh Arjuna, lust is the most, uh, it's the all-devouring enemy, most sinful enemy of the men, of mankind. So, you have to understand lust. Without that, you cannot understand Virgo. <laughs> Virgo is that place where we find uh, a challenge to control our lust. Now, many times when I say lust, people think uh, it's referring to uh, attraction with the, uh, towards the opposite sex. Well, that's one form of lust. But there are many other forms of lust. You know, lust for power, position, as they say, puja lava pratishtha, shukare na vishta. <laughs> uh, the desire for distinction, profit, and adoration. Puja lava pratishtha. Yes, I should be distinct. I should be distinctly distinct. <laughs> desire for distinction, adoration. Oh, you know, I'm very special. You know, people should come and you know touch me and say, "You're nice." You know good you're great you know right desire for uh, distinction adoration and profit yes i should always be successful how can i fail in life sukarena vishta it's like compared to the stool of a boar actually why not to a stool of human being or to the stool of a dog because the boar the uh, the boar eats human stool or any stool so stool of a board it's like double stool <laughs> so now you may be thinking oh it was about sun transiting work but why in the universe is this person talking of all this philosophical aspects here well uh, this is because whenever a planet transits Virgo the lust related to that planet gets tested it gets awakened yeah. because if you check uh, the original sign number five, which is Leo, Simha Rashi. So Simha is the one which is previous to Virgo. 
Virgo is second from Sima, which is the gain of Sima Rashi. Second house is the house of gain. Second house is belonging, basically. So therefore, Sun, which is the original Atma Karaka, represents us as an individual. Okay? It does not represent the soul, remember. It is the Atma Karak. It is not Atma. There's a difference. People think Atma Karak means Atma. No, it's not. Jupiter is eternally the Karaka for Atma. Because he is Jeev Karak. He is the one which comes into this bodily existence, which is signified by Mars. And the conception of being in this world, that is the sun. So the Atma is pure, which is Jupiter. And then there is sun, which is impure. Impure means, although it is a Sattvic planet, but it is uh, much impure compared to Jupiter. And then Mars is fully Tamas. Okay. So without the body, Jupiter cannot behave like the sun. So Mars is the one which makes Jupiter think that uh, it's like the sun, you know. So the Atma thing, sun shows kingdom. So it's like everybody has a kingdom. I have my kingdom among. In this kingdom, this phone belongs to me. You know? I decide what happens with this phone. I can keep it. I can sleep with it. I can break it. I can whatever I want. Okay. Now, of course, this is not my phone. My company's phone. I may uh, have consequences if I break it. But it's under me. I can break it you know, if I wish. Okay. But uh, I cannot go and break uh, my neighbor's mobile. And we'll call the police. <laughs> okay. So, so therefore, uh, second house is the uh, belonging actually. Okay. So the belonging of the sun, which is the conception of being in this world, the kingdom. So that is now transiting Virgo. Okay. So therefore. Whichever house Virgo falls in your horoscope and whichever house sun rules in your chart, you can feel that there is a temptation which I will be getting, which I have to resist or I have to transcend that temptation regarding that planet. So if sun is your 10th lord, you might uh, get a temptation that you know, uh, something to do with the career, maybe some shortcut you may find. And the moment you will give in to that lust, which means you will lose your uh, virginity, not in a sexual sense, but if suppose somebody is offering you a bribe and then you are, uh, you are falling prey to it, that's also like losing your virginity. Okay. So that, that's like saying you have fallen prey to the sin. Okay. So therefore, uh, the biggest challenge when a planet transits Virgo is it, it comes from Uttar Falguni Nakshatra, you know, then it goes to Hasta Nakshatra, then it goes to Chitra Nakshatra, then it enters uh, Libra finally. Okay. So therefore it's very, it's very important that you check which house sun rules in your chart. And because it is the king, it's the sun. So that, that area will consume a lot of time and energy. Because that defines your entire existence of life, you know. Or if you're running Sun, Mahadasha, Antadasha, Pratyantadasha, it's even more prominent for you, actually. Okay. So it's crucial that you understand these principles of what Virgo represents. And not just, oh, Virgo is, you know, some sign. No, 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 no. What is Virgo? Virgo is the place where if you, uh, if you fall prey, then what happens? You will be forced as Krishna says, you know, that when lust is unfulfilled, it turns into anger. And when lust is fulfilled, it turns into greed. Kamat krodho bhijayate, krodhat bhavati sammuna, sammurhat smiti vidrama, smiti bhamshat buddhi nasho, buddhi nashat pranashati. This is what Krishna says. Pranashati, at the end, it's disaster. <laughs> so therefore, uh, do not think that lust is only on a sexual sense. When we say lust, it means who is the prime example of lust actually? It's Ravana. Yes. And that is why he represents one of these. Uh, he represents this Anartha lust actually. Yeah. So he had the most uh, amazing, beautiful, chaste, lovely, nice, good wives. Anybody can ever imagine. Any man can ever dream. Yet he was unsatisfied. Why? Because this lust was burning always in his heart. 
he could not contain this sign of Virgo. He could not uh, preserve his, uh, uh, protect his virginity. Okay. Yes, he could not. Not that uh, everybody has to stay celibate, but if if a married person goes and uh, indulges uh, with somebody else, that's also like saying you have lost your virginity. Okay. So therefore, uh, we should read uh, the Bhagavad Gita especially so that we can understand more of these uh, sutras actually. Otherwise, what will happen? Um, people will say, oh, when planets are transiting Virgo, you will see that uh, so many things are coming up suddenly. You know? So many things are coming up suddenly. People will say that sixth house is the house of disputes originally. So therefore, whenever a planet transits Virgo, it's like some dispute is opening up. But then the question is, why at all there is a dispute? Why at all in the universe is there a the feeling that I need to do so many things? Now, it doesn't mean that it's bad to have a dispute necessarily if it's for the right reasons. But you always have to understand that the very fact that there's a dispute, it means that there is a desire which is uh, trying to you know, overpower us. Okay? And therefore, we are sometimes within uh, dis with disputes internally and externally. We are having a dispute inside. Should we do this? Should we do that? Should we say yes to that temptation? Should we say no? And sometimes it's external. Oh, yeah, actually, you know, I think you should do like this. I think he should do this. I think she should do this. And what should I do? Even that, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so therefore, you may feel a bit confused or you may think that, see that too many things are coming up. Too many things are coming up which you are not able to handle. Okay. Therefore, during this transit, it's a very good time to realize and understand that uh, I may be eyeing on too many things. People say that sometimes Virgo people are eyeing on too many different things. Okay. But why? That question nobody asks. So now you know the reason why. Because it is that sign where you always try to look outside. Okay. And if it is seen in a good way, uh, it's the sixth house of celibacy. But if it is acting in a wrong way, it can be the house of extramarital affair and divorce. Okay? That is why there, there could be a divorce. Because you might be uh, not committed. So, one side is abstinence, celibacy. That's divine, that's glorified. And on the other side is extramarital affairs. Okay? So, that's like gliding down to animal species in the next life. Yes, because that's how animals behave. Uh, animals do not have concept of marriage or commitment to one spouse. Even animals may have it sometimes. You will see. <laughs> so, if, if Mother Nature sees that you are not behaving as a human should behave, as the scriptures uh, suggest or recommend us to behave, then Mother Nature says, okay, uh, you want an uh, animal's body because your activities are like animals. Okay. So then, okay, no problem. You get a dog's body. You can enjoy with how many ever. <laughs> she dogs, no problem. You know, there's no restriction in animal body. You can, you can just go around every day, unlimited, no count. Okay, But for humans, it's not like this. For humans, the way the scriptures advise is that you try to control your anarthas because in this human body only, you can go beyond these anarthas. Okay? You'll never find a dog or a cat or a elephant discussing you know <laughs> oh actually you know uh, I, I just got married you know so i must stay with this spouse you, know, you 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 won't ever hear them discussing that never 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 have you ever heard ever seen somebody never right that's that is something which is only given to human beings why so that human beings can focus on spirituality that is the most important reason why there are restrictions in human body because the human body's purpose is something else. But if we are not in contact with that, then we are like animals. We can glide down to animal species as the scriptures say. You know, pasu, two-legged animals. So therefore, um, it's very crucial that you keep your mind in check and uh, not look elsewhere. <laughs> it can apply anywhere. If you are a student, your dharma your, is to study. Okay. If you are a businessman, it's that you 
do your business you if you are having a job then do your job properly so it can apply everywhere not just uh, to spouse or to uh, relationships it can apply anywhere and everywhere okay so that will be all from my side i hope you can utilize this transit properly and if you feel too many things are up then please read the bhagavad gita okay and that will clear your mind and give you understanding of what lust is and all other anarthas are okay we shall discuss about it some other time there you go if you're new please subscribe and consultations are below to my website god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will be there